This video, we're going to make a custom button with an image. It's going to be called Cool Button. It's going to be pretty responsive, pretty easy to work with. And this is going to be another end-to-end -end video, so there'll be zero edits. All right, first things first, we're going to paste in our images, just simply an up and down arrow. And let's actually kill that. And let's go in here. First thing we want to do in the code is go into Qt, and we want a QML file. Let's call this Cool Button. Probably help if we spelled cool correctly. There we go. And in here, let's start fleshing out some properties. So I'm going to give this an ID of root. And let's call this color border. And copy and paste time. So we got our border color, our normal color, our pressed obviously is when we're going to press down on this thing. And our hover color. We also want a string because we have an image that we're going to be able to update here. And let's call this source. And this is the actual image source that we're going to pull out of our resource. So let's go ahead and let's add in some resources here. Open an editor. And I want to add some files. Doesn't really matter where we put them, but you know what? I'm not really happy with that. So I'm going to remove that. Remove that. I'm going to add a prefix, then I'm going to add them in. There we go. Just kind of keep those separated. I should say files, images, up, down. We're good to go. Now I want a custom signal. I want to be able to say, hey, we click this button. So signal, clicked. It's very simple to do that. And let's go ahead and actually build our component out. We're going to say rectangle. Just going to give it an ID. Let's go ahead and give this a radius that's going to match the width so it's a perfect circle. The color, I want this to be the root color normal border. We could have done an alias, but I really didn't feel like it. Two and border color is going to be our root dot color border. And what I meant by alias is we could have done a property alias up here saying, hey, point just to the rectangle. And then we could have actually done the rectangle border, but I really wanted some control over that. Anchors fill, parent. Now, of course, we need a mouse area. Call that area and let's go ahead and anchors fill and we're going to do the parent hover enable is going to be true because we want to actually hook into the hover so we can get that color hover and before we get too far I'm going to add that image let's say image and our anchor We're going to fill the parent as well. I'm trying to keep this pretty simple, but also pretty flexible. And let's go with fill mode because we want to be able to stretch that image out. So I'm going to say image and we're going to do a preserve aspect fit. That way it scales appropriately. Source, I want this property up here. So I'm going to say root.source. And then we just need our mouse area. So we're going to say on pressed. Of 
upon released. And let's do on entered, on exit. Now we have our mouse interaction. So on pressed is kind of where the magic happens here. We're going to say body, and we want to go body color. Thought I heard thunder there for a minute. A little early in the year for thunder. That was a little weird. And go color pressed, root, and we want to go clicked. This is a signal. Now, IntelliSense isn't helping us out, but we can just simply grab this. And we're going to emit that signal. Very, very simple to do that. Copy and paste is going to help us out immensely here. And on release is going to be the color hover because we're still actually hovering the mouse over. On entered, we want to do color hover as well. And exit. Let's go with color normal. All right, cool button exists in all of its beauty. Let's go ahead and jump into our main here. And we want a column, but actually let's flip over to design view. We've got our cool button here. Let's go ahead and go to imports, cute quick controls. I want a column. And let's just scale this appropriately here. Put it in a specific layout. Go back. Want our cool button, so I'm going to just drag and drop two of those. I'm going to go there and there. There's cool button, cool button one. Now we do not have any width or height here, so we need to actually flesh that out. So I'm going to say 100 by 100. And... 100 by 100. There we go. We could have set that in the actual component itself, but I wanted the user to manually set that. And I'm going to say column. Let's give this a spacing of 25. And let's go ahead and jump into right here. I'm going to copy that URL. Cool button. Now our source here, let's just go ahead and paste that in. See if that takes. And let's paste that in there. So I want down, and this one is going to be up. Save, and let's run and see what this looks like. There's our buttons. Let's go ahead and hook into the on clicked. So I'm going to say on clicked, and I just want to go console.log up clicked and we can console log down clicked save run let's test that out we're going to bring up our app output here and I'm going to actually clear it so you can see it up click down clicked very cool what's up everybody this is Brian I hope you enjoyed this video it's part of a larger series out on udemy.com called QML for Beginners. The QML for Beginners course assumes you know absolutely zero QML. You're just starting off, and it's designed specifically for Qt5. I will re-record the entire series when Qt6 comes out, and just know that it's over 100 videos and 13 and a half hours of video on demand. I'll put a link below so you can get a highly discounted rate. And before you dive in, just understand it covers a lot more than what I can put into this list. Everything from what's QML to animations to C++, integration, JavaScript, and on and on and on. But one of the requirements up front is you have to know Qt Core. You should have some C++ under your belt and be very familiar with Qt 5. In case you have none of that, I do have some courses for Qt Core beginners, intermediate and advanced out on Udemy as well. Hope to see you there.